Hello, welcome back to my project. This is Eric. It's not easy to the vision project using microcontrollers. Insufficient RAM in the MCU is a daunting task even to handle a single image. Personally, I use an SVC board like a Raspberry Pi when I work on my vision project. I think it meets the minimal hardware spec for doing vision projects because libraries like um, OpenCV, NumPy, and TensorFlow are easy to use here. Nevertheless, I'm very interested in vision projects based on microcontrollers. I think it's possible to do the simple project through a very simple image processing, but it will be very slow. Uh, for example, it's like um, extracting a specific color value from an incoming image or drawing histogram and so on. Something like that. Very simple, but something useful. In this video, I have prepared two devices. One is a very cheap ESP32 cam, aka AI Thinkerboard, and a very expensive Arduino Vision Shield. As you all know, ESP32 cam is available for about $6. I think it's the cheapest MCU that can be purchased, including a camera module. ESP32 cam contains a 2 megapixel OV2640. What I'm using here is OV5640 instead. This is a 5 megapixel fisheye lens. It costs $16. The lens is more expensive than the MCU. I use this to get a little better quality. This is Arduino Portenta Vision Shield. This board includes Ethernet and HiMax HM01B0 camera module. This is an add-on board for use with Portenta H7, so you must have H7. On the official site, the price is $51 but can be purchased for $120 as a machine vision bundle when purchased with Arduino Portenta H7. Uh, this is the feature of HM01B0 camera is ultra low power image sensor designed for arrays on vision devices and applications. The maximum resolution is QVGA 320x240 and only grayscale images can be output. You may have a question here why it supports only grayscale not RGB. I will come back to this later. So it's a $22 versus $120 battle. To tell you the conclusion in advance, the camera module you need to use depends on which project you are working on. Let's have a couple of tests. The first thing to test is the quality of the image. Both cameras are set to a resolution of 320x240 and both set the pixel format to grayscale. The connected display is 3.2 inch IRI 9341 and is connected through the SPI interface. The point here is the quality of the 8-bit grayscale image. I'd like to see the quality of the 8-bit grayscale image here, but hard to figure it out. I think we should test this part again with the image file. The vision shield shows a very slow speed. The display connected by the SPI bus reads and writes at a very slow speed, which also affects camera communication. I'm pretty sure capturing a single image from a camera would obviously be fast. I will test this part later. On the other hand, ESP32 cam is acquiring images faster than Vision Shield. Drawing images on the display is very slow, so you can see slow screen updates. It's a micro SD card. In Vision Shield, the letters on the surface of the SD card are clearly visible. Looks very good. What about OV5640? If it's too close, it's out of focus and you can see it clearly. Also, if it's too far away, the letters become smaller and you can see them well. <laughs> it's hard to test. Anyways, the main reason for using grayscale images in image processing is to reduce computation speed and memory usage. Uh, basically, a color image requires three times as much memory as a grayscale image and more calculation time is required because operations must be performed on three channels. So if the color information is not highly utilized in the input image, it's efficient to convert the input image into a grayscale image and process it. Uh, for clear comparison, I will take a single image file from the camera and compare it. From the wrapped, grayscale image obtained from HM01B0, grayscale image from OV5640, and uncompressed color JPEG image. Of course, JPEG is a compressed image but no extra compression. All images are the same resolution 320x240. 
The grease key files I got from them are raw files, pure byte data without a header section. Uh, so the grease key image has the same file size, that's 76,800 bytes. The image's resolution is 320 by 240 and one pixel is expressed in 8 bits. So this is the correct size for the file. In addition, the JPEG file obtained from OV5640 is about 11 kilobytes. Because of JPEG compression, they can be significantly reduced in data size. I'm comparing two grayscale images, but I can't see much of a difference. However, the HM01B0 seems to be show more distinct outline. Also, the wrap tone has a better luminance, so the black area has more depth. Uh, the right one, on the other hand, seems to have less detail due to over-illumination. Our images are from OV5640, grayscale on the left, JPEG format on the right. What we can clearly see here is that the JPEG has a lot of noise. At the same resolution, grayscale images look much more detailed. In short, it seems that there are many advantages to using grayscale images in image processing. This test is about the acquisition speed of images. On the left side of each screen, you will see the number of images it has acquired so far, and on the right side, it's how many frame buffers can be obtained per second with the time taken to acquire one image. You know what? This test is meaningless. There's nothing we can do with just getting the frame buffer from the camera. This is just a test of how fast you can fetch the frame buffer from the camera module. Uh, let's say that two devices continue to acquire frame buffers from the camera and look at the power consumption. Because Portenta H7 operates at 480 MHz, it consumes more power. So I thought you'd take a lot more current. But because it is a low power camera module of HM01B0, it seems to have achieved very similar results. You can think of it as consuming an average of 280 mA. As you can see, it also contains a current to drive the display. Here, I'd like to test person detection using tiny machine learning. I use the Eloquent Tiny ML library. This library makes it very easy to use TensorFlow Write models in your code. If you are new to TensorFlow Write, I'm sure this will help you a lot. The model used here is the person detection model of TensorFlow Write. With an image frame as input, it determines whether there is a person in the frame or not. The calculation time taken to detect is about 550 milliseconds. The performance is amazing. If I turn the boat toward me, it recognizes me and determines that there is a person. It works great. For now, let me try this with ESP32 cam. As you know, ESP32 operates at 240 MHz, so I know it will be slower than H7. The calculation time for detection is about 5 seconds. It's 10 times slower, but it works. There's nothing we can do about this. In this video, I compared cameras based on microcontrollers. Arduino Portenta H7 Vision Shield is very good, but $120 is very expensive. Raspberry Pi 02W is only $15, so you can connect a USB camera to it and get better performance at a lower price. But this is a microcontroller, the smallest embedded system. I don't know, but I'm sure there's an industry that needs this. Also, I think the combination of ESP32 cam and OV5640 is great. I was able to get a better grayscale image than I thought. And that's it for today. I hope this video will be helpful for your project. Thanks for watching. See you on the next project.